All right, so the Duelist 101 Pet Calculator is a pretty useful tool um, to figure out what kind of talents a pet is, can have before you, like as soon as you hatch pet, pets, they're going to inherit talents. You want to know what those talents are. It's, you can't know what they are initially unless you just train them normally, and that can waste time that you don't really feel like wasting. It seems like a stupid thing to do. So this is this can save you a lot of time for figuring out, you know, you use the calculator and you find out if a pet is garbage, you don't have to worry about training it at all. And that can save a lot of time. So once you head to it, you are agreed with something. You're not you're gonna wanna do there's gonna be a sign in with Google button here. You're gonna wanna do that, it's safe, it's fine. You just wanna sign it save it. That'll just allow you to save pets to this so it's a little bit easier to get these pets if you're gonna plan on using the pets for breeding multiple times. And that'll save them to your little stable here. And if we want to, we can go ahead and click on this. I already have some pets saved. And I'm just going to click on this one here. Load them in. So what we do, what we granted with is up in this column, you'd put the name. You can name it whatever you want. I like to just put the name that the game assigns it. Or if I want to make it something myself, I'd put that here. Uh, this button here is for the species. So you'd click on it, and you'd be greeted with a long list of all the different species. And you'd want to put in that species, so you know you have your frosty croc mummy, or you know enchanter armament, or blue ghost, or something. And then this section here is for the notes, in case you want to specify like, oh, this pet has sprite or something. If you're if you're just looking through your list, what I like to do is if it's something like this, like this pet is just I got it from a drop from a boss, so he has completely generic stats. This is exactly what you'd find if you looked him up on the wiki. So I like to make a note of that, so I know that even though if I ever wanted to see what it would be like if I bred this pet with another pet just from generic, then I could have this list already made. And you're going to have these. None of these are going to be filled out if you just start off. Um, and what you do is you can go to a... If, you, if it's a generic pet, then what, you, what I recommend you do is you go to the Wizard 101 wiki, and you find your pet. It's not the same pet, but it's fine. We'll use it anyway. And there's going to be a talent list here, and you want to go exactly in the same order and just fill them out here, which is as simple as you just click on it in the middle area, you type in the thing, and then it's going to have this little box automatically checked. You sort of want to leave that unchecked. Manifested and unmanifested just means whether or not the pet actually has that talent in the game, like you've leveled it up and it's attained to that, it can use it in battle or something. Um, and generally, that doesn't really matter whether or not it's manifested or not, but I've seen sometimes where if you just leave it blank where it has them manifested by default automatically if they're all automatic then the calculator doesn't work properly so i'd go ahead and just leave them all um, undone and if it is manifested then they will go ahead and go ahead and leave that checked if you've already trained it or something so that's what the middle one is these are all the talents that it'll have in this column here these are the rarity so you have numbers zero to four and that, that corresponds to, over here, we have these little dots here. So if there's zero dots, which this one doesn't have any, unfortunately, that would be your commons, and then, of course, the more dots it is, the rarer, quote-unquote, it is, with four being epic. So if it's got four dots, then you put it here. If it has one, then, like, if it has one like this guy, except for here, all straight down, you just leave it in one every single place. However, if you do it this way, where you go through the middle, then it's automatically going to fill out everything. So if you put in, if I just type, like, delete it and go with this thing, and I click OK, it automatically uh, re like changes the information for it. The numbers in this column don't matter. Uh, there's a big algorithm that is what causes the thing, the calculator, to work. But this is really unimportant for our purposes. And I don't remember what this guy had. So I'm just going to reset him. Resetting, just if you have something but it's not saved, you can it'll just completely delete everything. And if we go ahead and put him back in, this save button would save it to your thing. If you're not signed in up here, it's just going to save it to a public thing, and you'd have to memorize the number yourself, this number here, which is how you find the pet. However, if you're signed in, you have your own personal little stable, and that is, it'll save it to your personal thing. So you can click on this and find it in your own uh, list of pets. Now, this is only for one pet here. Oh, and this also doesn't, none of this matters to, for anybody, really. This here is what you want to click for the actual calculator. Pull this up, and it opens up a bunch more stuff. 
So what we have here, this one and this one here are going to be our two parent pets, and this one here is going to be the child. You're not really going to have to fill out anything here except for the breed, really. And for the second pet, you can do the same thing. Now, I actually, in game here, I have two pets. I have this blue ghost, and I have this crocodile. Now, this guy has some good talents that I think are interesting, and I want them to be, I'd hopefully want them to be implemented onto this blue ghost here. So, they're both adults, and so we can go ahead and load this guy in. I already have a copy of this blue ghost as well. However, I purposely left these two back here undone, so I can just fill these in as we go. Now, if you go here, you can, it's, I don't know what this one is here. This one is Intrepid, so I can go ahead and click here and look for Intrepid. Oh. And, he, and he actually has manifested this talent, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this checked. I'm going to save it. And this one here, I'm not going to know. So this is when you'd go to the wiki and you'd find it, so I know, oh, it's the Forceful talent. So I can go ahead and look up here, Forceful. He doesn't have this talent, so I'm going to uncheck that mark. Press OK. And since this guy also has the Steadfast talent, I'm going to go ahead and just check that for my posterity's sake. Save him. And one thing to note also, when normally when you just go in here, it's going to look like this, and you're not going to be able to find out any information from this. If this is a pet that is, this is going to be more important later, but you don't want it to be in this. You always want to click on this so you can see this full talent list. So this is going to give you all the information except for what the actual talent is. So anyway, once we go in here, so we have this, and what we can do, we're not going to know any information about this guy until we actually breed our pets. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's run in here. And go into the hatcher. So I don't want this guy. So we have our two pets here. So we're going to get them to breed. I'm just going to go ahead and click hatch. Make a new pet. Done. Alright, so it's already got a thing. We have a new pet. And before, we don't even have to wait for this pet to hatch because it's already got all the information we need. Because we know that this is an ice pet because of this. So we know since this guy is dead, was ice and this guy was a death, we already know that this is going to be a baby uh, frosty croco mummy. So we can go and fill that out here. Frosty croco mummy. Alright. And the name, okay, so we have Lord Coco. We'll save that. Now what you want to do, see already it's given you here that there, there are only 11 options that this pet could even have. And the way we can, this is, what, this is where the magic starts happening. What we want to do is we have a big list of here. Even though this pet hasn't hatched, we already know that these, he has a bunch of rares and a bunch of epics, uncommons, and whatever. So what we can do is go through this list, and so we know that it's like 2, 3, 3, 1, 1. So I can go here and go... Two, three, three, one, one, and already we can see that these are these are already narrowed it down, and it'll just keep getting more and more close as we fill this out. So, we have two. so then we go four, one, one, three, one. So we go four. Whoops. One. One. Three and one. So you can see as we already fill this out, let's go ahead and click save. That it's all we already know that this guy as a guaranteed. Of course, it's not guaranteed because the as we level it up, the talents that it selects are completely random. But we already know that it, it's inherited black mantle and that it's inherited forceful. And as it goes, this was actually sort of a poor example because we didn't. The calculator can only work so good. But we already know, because you can hover over it and it'll tell you, that this it, it, we already know that whether or not it might have inherited the talents that we want. So for example, from this crossy mummy, let's say I, want him to, I wanted to inherit Spell Define. I know that's a 2, so I can go ahead and hover over the only 2 that he has. And I can see that he already hasn't inherited the talent that I wanted him to, 
So I already know that I don't need to train this guy any higher than I need to because I already know that he's pretty garbage because he doesn't have any of the talents that I really wanted and also because he's not the right species. But that's something you're just going to have to wait for chance to have work in your favor there. So there's that. And when you click Save as the pet, you can see under here, this is sort of just a little bit of cool information that you can see. There's a family tree, and there you have your frosty mummy, and it's got the two pets, the two pet parents that it has. And if we were to level this guy to adult, which I'm not going to do because he's not very good, but if I were to level this guy to be an adult, and then put him, breed him with another thing, I can move him to here. I can already do that right here. Just click reset on all these guys. Set here again, because whenever that whenever that's yellow, it's gonna it might cause a little bit of issues. Just don't worry about it. If you see the yellow and it's something that's not there's nothing in it, but it's yellow, then click reset. I can already open up my pet stable and find our guy, Lord Coco, and find out that it already fills in the information here. So we can then put in you know uh, maybe this guy. We can find out that it if we were to fill in the information for this guy, we would find out, like, oh, maybe he got some of these talents from a grandparent or something. So that's cool information. Also, you can do something where it saves all the information if you do this on your Google account. So if I were to load up our Lord Coco again, it saves the parent's information as well which is just a little bit of helpful information if you want to remember, oh, what did I breed this guy with or something? So it's pretty interesting. It's pretty useful. Um, I made this because a couple of my friends couldn't really figure out how to do this, and I didn't feel like explaining it over the over like Discord. So I made this video for them, and I hope this helps.